working class on DeerCast. And I don't know if this is a first. I'm going to claim it because why not? But I don't know if anyone's ever recorded a podcast quite like this. I'm with uh, Mark Drury and Perry. And this is a specimen of a whitetail here. He's the guest, right? He's the guest, yeah. <laughs> He's the guest on the podcast. We're just yeah. the co-host. We should have got him a headset. He's the star of the show. He right? is the star of the show. This is a um, showstopper. Do we want to go in right away and talk about how big this deer is? Because I don't know if someone's ever pod. I mean, maybe someone's podcasted over a buck, but I don't know about a buck this big. <laughs> maybe. And, and we just pulled him out of the cooler. I mean, yeah. so. He's cold. But the, he's freezing cold. <laughs> yeah. So we got him out of there t- to do this because Kurt, he was coming over today anyway. anyway. And he was like. Can we do a podcast over that deer? Because I killed him last night, and uh, well, I, I was like, "Sure." I yeah. didn't know you killed this deer. True, yeah. And I was planning on coming today anyway, and yeah. And then you 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 texted me last night. We had a podcast at our studio. You texted me last night and said, "Hey, I have a surprise for you," and I'm like, "Okay, yeah, whatever that is, you <laughs> yeah. know." And then uh, you must not have been able to take it. You couldn't wait. Finally, FaceTimed him. He FaceTimed me, and I'm like, what? And I'm like, He's in bed, and I'm like, how many times you FaceTimed me in bed or co- podcasted <laughs> me while we were in bed? And, and yeah, uh, yeah. I was like, hey, I got to show you something. So and we were I, having a good time celebrating. We were having a great time. I yeah. don't think anybody watching or listening, if you're listening, you need to get on and watch this because no one would blame you for this. This is a, I mean, a whitetail unlike anything I've ever seen in person in the flesh. This thing is just a, it's a, the, exactly what you want in a big midwestern mature whitetail and i don't even know where you want to take the story first i don't know where the build-up is on this um but all i know is i'm excited to be talking to you guys and podcasting true hunting camp fashion Literally. over the whitetail himself yeah you don't get any more raw or in the moment than this i mean he's, he hasn't been dead 24 hours yet yeah, yeah. no yeah um I, it, you know it it's a long story with this guy um in fact, we're doing a series called Deer Season 21, and during the summer, we have summer picks from a lot of different farms and whatnot, and mm-hmm. he was really the best deer we had pictures of, obviously. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Josh was like, I'd really like a big deer for the static, you know, the thumbnail on YouTube. Yeah. And I was like, use this one. He's the biggest deer we have pictures of. Yeah. And he leaves every year. So I said... Go ahead and use him because he ain't staying anyway. I mean, <laughs> right. I've had pictures of him since he was three and a half. Yeah. And he'd, he'd shed his velvet, and he would either leave just prior to shedding his velvet or the moment he shed his velvet, and he was gone. Just wasn't his fall range is what you were thinking? I, I just assumed he just went rutting somewhere else, and I didn't yeah. know if that was a half mile, a mile, or 10 miles because they, they do move a lot. I just yeah. knew it was somewhere safe because – he kept showing back up the next summer. I'm yeah. like, oh, there, there's the disappearing act. That's what I call him. Like, yeah, yeah. He'd disappear every fall. <laughs> and um, for whatever reason, this year I about blew me away when I got his picture hard horn mm-hmm. in mid-September. And I'm like, he's here. Perry, check it out. He's here. There's, but, a, there's I, a chance. Well, but I'm like, he's going to leave. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm convinced he's just not left yet. You know? Also, this year he was the biggest. Prior to the years we had other big deer. Yeah. So maybe he got run out. You know, oh, that, okay. That's yeah, yeah that's, that's what my theory is hierarchy changed. But still, yeah. rut range is rut range for whitetails. They yeah. they often don't do what this deer did. Mm-hmm. So, Thankfully. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. I was like, so he wasn't even on the radar. No. Because right? cause of just prior our, patterns. Our pre-fall <laughs> plans. Like, he, was not, he did not figure in any of the plans because he leaves. Yeah, yeah. We would, we would have never put him as the YouTube static for deer season one. No. no. Yeah. I'm not going to put a 216-inch deer on YouTube go, look what we, you know. Yeah, I mean, right. I'm private about certain things, right, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're just not going to. But I was convinced he was going somewhere else. So. For sure. Um, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, it's like you, you, well, I knew he was an incredible specimen. Like, yeah. we got pictures of him this summer. I was like, oh man, look at look what Disappearing yes. Act did this summer. And uh, I knew he was entering his he's six and a half uh, because I've had pictures of him since he was three and a half. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, oh my goodness. And then mid September, I'm checking a reconnaissance camera and I'm getting pictures of him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, he's on the farm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, I can't even believe this. And then 30th of September, last picture, gone, nothing. I'm like, all right, now he left. He was just a there month, he goes. month okay. behind. Back to the month he did, behind. He did daylight though that day, like he was yeah, out. Yeah, he, he daylighted on the 30th, and then not another picture. And um, I was like, now he went wherever he goes for sure. Yeah, 
and then which would make sense from for what you knew yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so um the night of the 6th of october i get a picture at 11 30 p.m mm-hmm. on the plot he had daylighted at so it's it's the middle of the night and i'm like sent it in a group we have a group text or a group shared album myself perry wade josh carson taylor mm-hmm. it's like you know i look at all the cell reports daily from missouri and iowa and i throw them all in the shared album so that everybody sees the information that i pulled out all the files yeah and i'm like i text perry because wade's in wade's in alberta and i was like it came back i was like we got trying tomorrow night at 11 at night 11 at night yeah mid you know middle of the night picture i'm like we got to try yeah we got to go this may be our only opportunity to hunt this deer Mm -hmm. and and I went back and looked at his pictures from the, I think it was the 28th or 29th of September. I had a middle of the night picture of him. Mm-hmm. And then he daylighted on that plot the next night. And I was like, we're liable to, we're liable to see him. Yeah. yeah. And all day yesterday, this was the most eerie thing about this story. Taylor came to me four different times. She'd grab me and she goes, you're going to kill that deer tonight. She goes, I just feel it. She goes, it's, I've got this strong, eerie, crazy feeling. You're killing that deer tonight. Mm-hmm. I mean, her intuition was, it's, it gives me chills to think no about kidding. it. She was emphatic yeah. about it. She, she said told it everybody in camp about times. it. Multiple times. Multiple really? times. She goes, you're killing him tonight. I can feel it. And sure enough, like Perry, we were in the blind, and, and the setup is like a basically a football field, mm-hmm. white-tailed deer radish plot, and then... 300 yards or 250 yards of grass that's tall as perry you know the nastiest you've seen it's really? a jungle yeah. right and there's big willow thickets it's a big bottom field and we have 30 acres of solid cover yeah at the south end of this bottom and a plot in the middle of it yeah and perry's like i, I see deer back there like i saw some movement in the grass just uh-huh. quick you know, flash or yeah. glance yeah and i threw my little pulls up and he was in one hole in the grass standing there facing the plot and i go it's him (laughs) i go it's him and he couldn't see him so i grabbed the camera got a little footage and then he spots him so i give it back to him yeah yeah and um he he marched through the grass it's 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 like a parting of the red seas the grass is just like his rack is coming through that grass and he comes 200 yards and everything he's just moving the grass and just nothing like shaking us to the core i can only imagine (laughs) because he you know He's a, he's a show. Don't mess up, Perry. <laughs> get no, it on film. <laughs> when you get in the moment, like you have faith in who sure. you're with. Hey, yeah. There's not going to be a slow mess the up. game down. Hundred percent. I was trying to. It was almost impossible. <laughs> to be hard with this. It was almost impossible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just to, like I said, but he's the star of the show. Like you just don't don't uh, see whitetails like this. My buddy Jim Burns, growing up hunting, they just don't come around. Nope. That's what he always they said. They don't exist. Yeah. Right. They don't. They don't exist. Yeah. You know. Yeah look at million and a half two million photos a year and th- th- these are never in them right yeah he was this year but that's only because he, he reached you know an age Every, of six everything worked out for him and yeah. maybe somebody will watch this podcast and go I-, I know that deer and i'd love to know that'd be cool where he went every year yeah yeah I somebody wonder that. somebody knows him i would assume i would think so you know, a deer like this you know even someone sees him on like cross a road somewhere in front of him like you see a deer like this and you go i saw a you know that's like that's how legends and rumors oh, yeah. get spread is, yeah. is deer like this yeah you know deer like you've never seen before deer like you've never seen before and i wonder if i, I always wonder when we talk about big bucks like that if those kind of more behind the scenes stories will come out after and sometimes they do I, yeah it's cool i think you know um like we did the giant tracker with munson that yep. big buck and he found out afterwards when uh, they were butchering it they found a broadhead in it oh wow and that was kind of came in i think after the giant tracker like article write-up segment was posted on on deercast and i'm wondering i'm like i wonder if that person will reach out and and seize and, this and say hey i shot a buck last year that looks similar to that you know what i mean yeah. anything like that adds to that buildup for that whitetail which i think is cool to their it, timeline it is cool cool yeah, story say. so but, i mean you could get i mean he went straight to the the cooler who knows? You could get to cleaning him up, and f- I mean, I mean, you could. know what I mean. You could find sure. a head in him or something crazy. Who oh, knows? Yeah. You never know. Yeah, that's so. what adds to the timeline. You just wonder where they went and what happened with to them no. while they were gone. No doubt. But go back into so he's coming through, and you just you're trying to slow the game down. I imagine <laughs> both of you guys are in your own way. I let. What's your perspective at that point? I mean, he's walking right into your lens, essentially. Yeah, he's walking <laughs> right at me. I just 
I don't shake the camera and <laughs> yeah. make sure the numbers are ticking on their cord. <laughs> right, yeah, like what I'm doing right now just to make sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. C- control the breathing. He walks walks into that radish plot and faces us and eats for a little bit, and he got to 37. And, and I'm, he, he, Perry's going, how far is he? I'm, and I'm giving him. Yeah. So he knows, yeah. like, okay, he knows what distances I'll shoot at and what I won't. So I said 37, you know, and I'm like, but – the, when he got to the field, there was three or four other bucks out there eating, and they all just, they're like, Later. it was funny. They <laughs> all stopped eating, and they all walked right past us at under 30. Yeah. yeah. and On either side of us, and I'm like, he's going to follow them. Yeah. But he didn't. He cleared the plot, and then he put his head down and didn't stop eating. <laughs> he's like, all right, this is He mine. was mauling those deer yeah. rashes. Perry's got footage of him hanging out both sides. I mean, it's a whole plant just in his mouth. Really? Yeah. They oh, love yeah. those deer radishes, man. No kidding. Yeah. And he turns broadside and kind of walks away from us a few yards. And that's yeah, I was he, like, ah, I just lost yardage, you know, because yeah. he's at 37. I thought he's going to continue to work past us because behind us, behind all this brush, is a huge 20 acre corn and bean field, right? Yeah, a yeah. destination food source, which is generally the flow. They come through the green past. and they go way out in the middle of the yeah, big yeah. bottoms. But he didn't do that. He turned away. And I'm like, ah. Stupid, oh, dumb. I, heard, I just passed a thirty-seven. Idiot, idiot, idiot. <laughs> idiot. I heard the release clip onto the string when he turned away, and I thought, "Okay, we're about to, we're in business." <laughs> and then he parks himself directly behind the scrape tree. We have yep. a scrape tree in this yeah. plot, and and just stands there. We lose another five minutes right there. Yeah. And then he finally came out from behind it, and I'm I'm shaking, trying to get the range, and I'm getting I get 55, I get 22, like I'm all over, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm like none of this is real. Anybody would be experienced in the same situation. So I keep clicking, I, I 43, 43. I go, okay, I'll, I'm on him finally, yeah, you yeah. know. So he was 43 point something or another, and I told Perry, I said, here we go. Mm-hmm. So then I I was lucky to hit him good, you know. Yeah. Smoked him, hit him real good. Smoked him. Yeah, you showed me the the quick shot before we started yeah. recording and it is i mean you couldn't you couldn't put it any better no really i mean so they you had to have slown the game down your head mentally to i did you have to on a deer like this because i think i'd be falling apart oh 100 percent because i'd be <laughs> we both were yeah. i'd be calling loophole and be like hey can you make like a 200 inch deer image stabilization for yes. your range finders <laughs> help me out yeah <laughs> but i i can't even imagine he runs 40 yards and dies on film in the plot in the radishes. in the plot it didn't leave the radishes no nope. no i don't know if it was 40 it wasn't far yeah it was it might have been 30 yeah hey, i mean he give, did not go far give me your mindset I, I want both of you guys give me the mindset reaction when you see that arrow land where it hit him well i said it yeah he said immediately i go smoked him 43 yards i immediately said it yeah like, yeah and you i mean you're watching it through the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you see it probably even better than oh, yeah. he sees it. Yeah, and 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 then and immediately my reaction, like this, th- that shot and making that shot, like I'm capable of that shot. Last year I had a deer in the same plot, and I hit him back here, and I hit his artery, and I was lucky enough to get him as mm-hmm. a deer we call BW, but I'm like, what did you just do? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I practice at 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 yards so yeah. that when you get a shot, it's, it's easier. It's, it's easier. Yeah. And I, I can make those shots, and and I, I I squeezed my bow, and when I squeeze my bow, I hit high right, you know, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. It, it's torque, yeah, out of excitement, yeah, yeah. So towards the end of the season, I took some carpet and turned it upside down where it scratched my hand, and I, I would remind myself because I'm not slowing the game down, obviously, I'm over yeah. over squeezing, yeah. And in my reaction, I told Perry, I I've said it, I was like. I worked all summer to make sure I don't do this again because for we sure. owe it to them to make an ethical shot. Yep. That's not right. That's unacceptable for me or anybody else. For sure. Yep. And I'll be Quick the first clean. to say that. Do you, I was so mad at myself last year because I made two not great shots. And I'm like, this is ending. Mm-hmm. Like So mentally, all summer, I'm like, I am not going to do this ever again. I saw Levi at the Matthews Summit this summer, and I was like, I was telling him how I put the carpet on there as a reminder, and I said, I need something sharper, you know, so I never <laughs> squeeze it again. He goes, hey, man, there's, I know a guy that's got some prototypes coming out. Yeah. And uh, he had them sent to me, and I don't, I, I'll show you on my bow. Yeah. But I mean, they. Don't ever grab Mark's bow. It is painful to grab my bow. <laughs> And this it's, is like a training device. It's like a little button with a spike on it, yeah. and you feel it. Anybody that grabs it goes, wow, you know? No, but I can oh, yeah. feel it. I, I 
put my hand out there and you touch them, you're like, uh uh-uh, uh, it's loose grip, you know? Oh, yeah. Leveled my level and took my time and I slowed the game down and I, I was breathing correctly mm-hmm. and I let it fly. And I mean, it hit exactly where I was aiming and he didn't drop. So, dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, this is the exit hole here if you're watching and it's just money. It's perfect. So, killer shot. Way to keep it together. Because I don't know if I'd be able to do it. <laughs> it dude, this buck is just well, massive. Sometimes when you make mistakes, you make yourself better, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah. don't let this happen again, you know? It's, Definitely. Well, that's it, why we practice. We're out there to be, make clean kills, not, you For know. sure, for sure. And that's what, you know, I had a, that mule deer hunt coming up, and, you know, it was high pressure for me, you know, going in. First deer hunt since my dad passed and stuff, and I told everybody shooting. I was like, I'm, I'm shooting my bow this summer like I'm training for a fight. And that's what I did. And you have to. Yeah. Got you know? to. Muscle and, memory's got to take over. And it paid off. So, yep. um, and you just need to keep after it. But, you know, I mean, way to keep it together and slow the game down on this stud. So, t- talk to me like he goes and falls, and then and then what? Like, what happens then? <laughs> Good thing the the blind walls are sturdy because we were both <laughs> leaning against them. We were. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it was crazy. It was hot in that blind. <laughs> there was a lot of breathing, a lot of body heat right there yeah. in that moment. Yeah. So, it uh, we just let it all loose then I from bet. that moment till four in the morning we let it loose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the moment he fell till four a.m. we did not stop. <laughs> no, letting it loose. We That's had a good awesome. good night last night. So what? Uh, I mean, how how much time do you give this deer? Like, are you are you the guy that, like you, let's go get our hands on him, or did you just soak in the moment until you got up to him, or like how how much time did you wait for you went and put your hands Immediate. on? Immediate. We did yeah. a few things in the blind that we needed to do and got our stuff and we went to him immediately. Yeah, and then proceeded to get swarmed by mosquitoes it's a it's a nasty wet bottom and they were in yeah. there man oh, I mean, yeah. that camera light came on and it went <laughs> yeah, they're all they're all right here i'm <laughs> filming there's a camera light it's just <laughs> that's <laughs> but we did our recovery tagged him immediately yeah. and then the access into that bottom is is quite a jaunt around the farm through a pasture mm-hmm. and we had to get out and then come all the way back around and then go through the heart of the farm so yeah that allowed us to wait for carson and taylor and also Josh. So yeah, yeah. we all, as a group, family, went down there and, and recovered the deer together. That's awesome, man. God, yeah. that's got to be so fun. This, this thing is, I mean, this is the surprise, right? You know, I get mm-hmm. here, I'm like, we, we're, we're podcasting over this buck because, it's, I mean, you don't get the opportunity. Like, deer like this don't come around, man. They don't exist. And it's 216 and 5'8". Five 5'8". Eights. Five eights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we measured him. Slowly and carefully oh, last yeah. night. Added yeah. it a few oh. times, and I don't think there's any question. One that's side, what, what this side is. was 100, 101 or 100. 101 and a few ace. Yeah. yeah, his left side's 101 <laughs> inches. No kidding. With yep. with beams, mass, and and uh, spread, he's like 120 something. Yeah, Without. beams, mass, and spread. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. Well, I mean, there's no question that deer is what we're saying it is because I mean, and, and I don't know. I know he looks big on video. But when you get around a deer like this and you're taking photos with your phone and you're looking at it, you're just, it's incredible. Well, it's, it's beams. One was 29 inches, one was 30. Those don't exist either. Mm-mm. That's insane. No. That's absolutely insane. I'm a, actually, I'm an official measurer. And I always say, like, you start to see good measurable deer at like 25. Like, tw- 24 is getting yep. good. Like, 25 mm-hmm. beams is like getting really, good beams. really good. Yeah. 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 So you get you with see a lot of beams in the twenty to twenty two inch range. A lot, a lot. Most, most deer are twenty to twenty two. Most, most mature deer are twenty to twenty three. Yep. And then I know like you get a buck that does twenty six, twenty seven beams, you're like, ooh, good Whoa, beams. Big. Good yeah. beams, you know. Different class. My old man's last buck, I measured the buck. He was a clean eight with a, a kicker down here off his base, like right above his eye. I'm you know, I'm guessing, yeah, he's probably mid forties, a good eight, you know, it's just like an eight with that. I measured it, and I didn't t- account for his beams and his threes. 160 even, 27-inch beams. Mm. And I'm like, well, I did, it, but it, he's shaped fine. Because you never, you never look at one and go, oh, he's got a 27-inch beam. You can't like no. anticipate it's, it's, that because it it's so rare. Well, and then the way the buck grew, he was like cantered a little bit. Like one beam kind of went in, and he grew kind of off to the side. So he was deceiving. He looked tight in one side, but wide from the other. And so I'm like, 160. So I measured him two other times. I'm like, oh, yeah, just... I didn't give him the credit the deer deserved really, sure. for what he was. So, yeah, I mean, a deer like that is just, he's got everything. I mean, he, he really does. He's got it. And he, had our, he had our full attention. I can promise <laughs> you that. Yeah. He did not leave property. I mean, he stuck around just long enough to, uh, to pay for it. <sighs> he just, we're very blessed. Like I said, he yeah. went from not on the radar to, 
yeah, let's go try it. Maybe he'll come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally that, 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 so. What, what do you think? I mean, you know, you said you got the picture of him, um, you know, at like 1130 PM and then he daylighted, he daylighted it. And then you got a night photo of, of him. No, or he had been versa. gone a week. Gone a week. Okay. Yeah. And then I got a nighttime picture and I was like, I'll be doggone. He did come back. Cause when he left on November 30th, I'm like, or September 30th, I'm yeah. like, he's gone for good now. You yeah. know, this is when he did his deal. But I got that 1130 and I'm like, maybe he is going to oh, I thought he had daylighted. I thought maybe he I did back in September. Okay. September 30th, okay. he daylighted. Yeah, yeah. Like 29th, I got a nighttime picture and then he daylighted the next night. And I'm okay. like, maybe he'll do it again. He did. What do you think that is? You think it's just. I mean, there's just. I mean, I don't know if there's a pattern there to look at or to acknowledge, or if well, it's just it's what this happened. time of the year, this phase, we're in phase two greener pastures. They're not moving yet. Like they're not traveling and looking. They might on on an occasion, mm-hmm. but right now they're pretty much eating and bedding. Yeah. And I'm like, if he's there 11:30, he's probably could be close in tomorrow. there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We got yeah. the bedroom. We got the bedroom. I call it my buck hotel. Buck hotel. <laughs> yeah. He was a guest that's, last that's night. That's the nasty stuff. Oh yeah. Oh it's, my. <laughs> it's stupid. You step two steps into it, and you're like, I'm not walking any farther. Yeah. I'm turning around. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's where I killed BW last year. He was 180 one something. 181, I believe. 181. Yeah. It came out of the same grass. Man. I mean, they just love it right there. It shades real good, real early. Yeah. And, and this uh, buck's giving danger a run for his money on, on score. Essentially, the same danger was like four or five eighths larger than him. <laughs> and Bucktober would have been the same had he not broke off that that inside time yeah so. that's incredible man how cool it's yeah i mean we're kind of speechless about it honestly yeah. because it, you you know you just don't expect to see him and we did you know what my favorite thing is man and um and i'm sure you probably have a similar perspective of what i do and and i'm i'm doing this to give you credit and maybe see like you know growing up watching you and as one of my childhood hunting idols and everything and you would almost think for the amount of like the work you've done and the amount of deer you've killed and big deer that you've patterned and have been successful on that. I think, I think it'd be easy for someone who doesn't know you to maybe be like, Oh yeah. Like you might not be as appreciative of it as you think, like if somebody else were to shoot it and I'll tell everybody listening or watching that is not the case because I wouldn't have got that excited phone call last night the way I did. And the whole time since we've got here to record podcasts, it has been excitement and high vibes over this animal. And so I will say, and, and, I, and I never doubted you on that, but I just want to clarify for that. If anybody thinks that you don't appreciate these animals because you've killed some big deer, that it is not the case. You Fair. are just as thankful for this animal as if how I would be if I shot it. So it's cool. It, it, you know, next to, to, you know, family and God, and we Perry's got the same DNA. That's why I love the mossy oak pattern this year. And, and I'm not wearing DNA today, right now, but DNA is like, what a great name because mm-hmm. your DNA, his DNA, mine, Wade's, Taylor, and everybody watching this right now is identical. It's that yeah. hunting passion. And it's the reason we all go out there and do it. And, you know, wh- whoever would have been sitting behind it, like the, the feeling is unbelievable. It's euphoric. Yeah. It's a euphoric sense of holy cow. Yeah. You know, it's like a deer you just don't ever get to see and then to have the opportunity to to have pictures of him and then to go see him and then actually kill him like it's a it's a rare occurrence and we feel so blessed and and thankful yeah yeah. yeah. and it's that dna that keeps you going and and loving it and and loving what what we do like i said god and god family and country frankly and yeah. then and then white tailed deer and wild turkeys and probably wild turkeys <laughs> and white tailed deer but oh, come on <laughs> I'm can, the same way with every wild turkey right oh yeah every <laughs> single one I freak out like really? I love it so it's, much yeah turkeys are cool I'm not saying they're not turkeys are life there's turkeys no turkey life. that's this cool uh, Perry, I'm come glad on. it occurs in the spring on, I'm, I'm a turkey hunter come on man I'm the I'm, only guy in here that I on. love big white tails but. But if I had to pick one, I was turkey hunting. I'd pick it too, and that's Come saying on. something sitting here over at <laughs> 200 It is, here, it know? is. Hey. To, and you, to go back to your point, if, if Mark wasn't excited, yeah. he wouldn't have FaceTimed you at 1130 while you were in bed. <laughs> right. I'm like, well, <laughs> I, I got to answer. answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, gotta I didn't answer. care either. Everybody's like, you can't do that. I go, oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> I go, he has called me so many times in bed doing a podcast. And I'm like, what, Kurt? <laughs> finally got him back. So. That's what you said, too. I'm like, Mark, I'm in bed. How many times have I answered your phone calls late at night to do podcasts? I'm like, Check hey, this out, bro. Touche. Oh, okay. That's, that's worthy of have a FaceTime anytime. <laughs> Definitely. Well, congratulations, man. Thank you. An yes. absolute stud. Yep. Yep. Lucky. 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 Good work. 
and in a, in a special place it's cool down in that bottom and, and frankly two or three years out of five we don't have a food plot down there it floods all the time it's a really low bottom no kidding and we, we're in a drought and a dry year and that's why there was food there otherwise there wouldn't there, more often than not we don't get to put a plot in there awesome. we've had three four years in a row where we lose them we'll put them in <laughs> yeah, yeah they'll come up get a three inch rain Done. underwater wade and i went and replanted it I think it was two or three years ago on DeerCast, people that might remember that. We mm-hmm. were down there replanting it, getting torn up by mosquitoes, you know, and then we lost it again. Mm. It's stupid how many times we've lost that plot. But when it works and you're in a drought, it's, it it's, works. it's gold. It's killer. It's magic. <laughs> well, I'm glad, you, I'm glad it held up for you because, man, it paid off. It's uh, incredible. And I, I don't know. We'll claim it. We'll say we're the first podcast to do a, podca- a full-length podcast over a 216 and some change inch buck. I don't know if it's ever been done. I'm sure it has. But hey, we'll give you that credit, brother. I'll take it. You know, whatever's right. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I'll take it. Why not? Well, but, I don't know where to go from here, man. This I don't is know. Incredible. On to the on to the next one. On you know, on to the next hunt. Whether it be Perry Wade, Taylor, whoever, man. Every day is yeah is a special special day around here because we're out there chasing and doing what we love and yeah the prep work's all done and then you get in there and actually go hunt. I I, I made a comment one of the deer season twenty ones. I go. We shoot them during the season, but we kill them now. And I was talking about summer preparation yep. and mm-hmm. stuff. And that, that's this one is in that category. For sure. Definitely. Beautiful buck. It's incredible, man. And I think we'll probably put a giant tracker segment on this episode. But I'm just going to end it with go shoot a giant, guys. Thanks for <laughs> listening. Thanks for watching. I hope everybody shoots one this big. I, I really do. I yeah. do, too. It would uh, deer hunting dreams come true for everyone all around. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We appreciate you. Go shoot a giant. Please do. Big one. Then tell us about it. Giant Tracker. It's a fresh one from this season. And uh, Michael Munson's joining me on this segment. Thanks for doing this kind of during the workday, kind of last minute. Um, But man, what a killer buck you got already this season. Thanks, brother. And uh, no problem at all. It's, It's an honor to be on here. Um, Man, I, I shot him in Southeast Kansas. I was, I was actually reluctant to even put in this year because, mm-hmm. uh, we, we, I have a new son at home. He's a, he's a year and a half and I, uh, I was really wanting to spend a lot of time with him. Yeah. So I put in for Kansas muzzleloader thinking I wasn't even going to draw out because I, I, I was going to put in for a preference point. And mm-hmm. uh, when it, when it came time, I was like, Oh, I, I drew out. So <laughs> I I've hunted the same place up in Kansas forever Mm -hmm. and man, it's just the, the daytime. I just don't see many, many during, uh, many during shoot shooting hours. I'll have some one sixties, one seventies, just every few years. Well, I was up Turkey hunting in Kansas a few years ago and my cousin had told me I need to come up and try his place. I'm like, well, Mm -hmm. I knew there was some, you know, there was some bean fields around, you know, there's some crop fields around and there was some good cover, but mm-hmm. his was all Bermuda pasture and, uh, he'd been running cattle. Well, I, uh, I took, I, I went and set some cameras up there, some cellular cameras and for two or three months and had nothing on camera. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's encouraging, I, I was, right? I was like, well, this is going to be another year, another wash. Well, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to get it or going to get to spend some time with my son. Mm-hmm. And then I was, we were working cattle at work. Oh, what was it? It was earlier towards the beginning of the month of September, which season opens there the 13th. Oh, pretty and, dang early compared to everywhere else. Yes. Yeah. And it, I got a text on my phone or, you know, notification. Yeah. And there was this giant and I like my heart immediately started racing. You know, I, uh, a guy that a buddy that works with me at work, I immediately sh- said, look at this, you know, I'm probably not going to kill this deer, but look how big he is. You know, like, right, I, was, yeah. I was pretty amped up. So this and, bug just showed up out of nowhere. You had no like hints that there might be a stud like this or anything. No, no, I had, I had no, no inkling at all. I, I knew there had been history of big deer here. My cousin was telling me, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I'd ran t- cameras for two months with, does and a few spikes well he rotated his cattle out of this buck was coming from a oh some heavy timber mm-hmm. and cutting across this there was a little draw and he was cutting across it on my cousin then going out to this bean field at night mm-hmm. well 
he would come back in the conversely, he'd come back in the morning. And I, I didn't hardly have any cover out there. I was, I was, there was one little cedar tree tucked in the middle of, uh, it was right, is right in his fence line. And it was about mm-hmm. 200 yards from where, where I, I thought he'd been traveling. So I, I yeah. decided to set up there and, uh, just like in a ground blind or what, or did you just set up like with no blind or what? I, I talked to one of my best friends about it. You know, I, him and I, Brian Beecham, him and I had done a lot of talking back and forth mm-hmm. about, you know, trying to set up. I, I went up there a couple weeks before season and I'd found another cedar tree to the South. Uh, and I, I was going to set, or I guess it was to the West, but, for a south wind, I was going to set there. For a north wind, I was going to set at this tr- cedar tree, and that's where I ended up killing them. Yeah. Um, but it was just like there was hardly any cover. I, di- I didn't put up a ground a ground blind because uh, I was I was scared. You know, it was going to push them out of the area. I'm always scared of that too. You know what I mean? Like, cause I don't know. I'm not a big ground blind guy. It's some, I want to kill like a big buck out of a ground blind, but I'm always really weary about that too. Like popping one up and then making it kind of like have a buck on a pattern, like reroute. And then you're kind of out of the chips. Yeah. Um, so tell me like going into that point, you kind of scout out these places. How many trail cam photos were you getting of this deer leading up to that point? Um, I, uh, it was like September 9th, 10th, and 11th which is three you know like three four and five days before season yeah so you're getting like really excited at this point i'm sure oh, i'm getting really excited because i actually got a daytime photo on the 10th and oh dang so right in the right in the wheelhouse there oh yeah he was he was <laughs> i wasn't as excited until i got that and that right at that point i showed the picture to my boss and I'm like man if there's any way you can please let me off you know, just for this early season muzzleloader, I'll work however many hours I need to for the rest of the season. You know, I had to do whatever I did to try to get <laughs> I mean, that. yeah, I don't blame you for doing that. It's a decent trade, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that so now I'm back at work hooked up. Uh, that's kind of the, you know, the give and take. It kind of. It's, yeah. it's and, then, and then he let you off to do the podcast. He's like, man, I didn't think this deer would create all these obligations. I bet is what he's thinking now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Now, yeah, I thought he was going to be here every day now. Yeah. What the heck? Well, but, so th- thank you, Jim, for letting me off for a little bit. So, yeah, shout out to your boss. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, shout out to my boss. So, <laughs> so I mean, the tenth and season opens the thirteenth, right? Is what you said? Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I go up and I hunt opening day. See nothing. Um, he disappears, or actually, he showed up the night of the thirteenth, like two hours after you know when I get back to the house or whatever. Yeah. And he he. Which is, still, which is still probably encouraging, right? Because you know he's no, there. No, it was. It was. Mm-hmm. But he, after that, he disappeared. Like, he, I'm like, man, he must have smelled my, he must have smelled me something. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I started second guessing everything, and I'm starting to get nervous. Yeah, but, don't blame you. And I had the wrong wind, so I started, I started just scouting from afar. Like, mm-hmm. I, I said it was my seventh hunt that I killed him. But the, some of the other hunts was, you know, 600 yards away, scouting with binoculars, setting, yeah. trying to figure homework out, hunts. out, doing my homework. Yeah. And I actually, I, I went back to work after four days, you know, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. Uh, I hunted those days and then my wind was just wrong. So I'm like, I'm wasting my time up here. I'm going to go back to work and work through the weekend. I know there's a big cold front coming in. And not only that, the moon, uh, the evenings were going to be good and the mornings were going to be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned that from Terry Drury. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, when the moon is hanging high in the mornings, it's normally really good for the morning hunts. And it, when the moon is rising of the evening, it's really good. Well, mm-hmm. I had all the all that pushing together for me and I didn't have him on camera, but my boss said, you better go try it. And I really wanted to, but when he gave me the, okay, <laughs> yeah, I packed my stuff, headed straight to Kansas. Uh, How far a drive is that for you? Cause you're from Oklahoma, right? It was about a three hour drive. Okay. So yeah, so, you got to plan ahead a little bit. You can't just like, just leave right now and go. No, no. And I, I so I hurried up there and I actually made that first evening set 
and I only saw, I only saw two does and I'd been kind of discouraged because that's all I would been seeing. It had been relatively slow mm-hmm. until, until he, I guess until the morning that I, I was able to shoot him, but yeah. go, going, going into that morning, I, uh, I woke up and, uh, my cell cam had texted me and said he was in front of my camera right, right then. And I like, Oh, like right at, like at that moment, like he was there right now. The second I had set my alarm to wake up to go hunting, I looked <laughs> in front of my camera and I'm like, Oh my God, I've got yeah. it. So, so I rush around and I, I throw on my, uh, I rush around, take a shower, I bathe down a nose jammer. Do I, I try to do anything I can to up the odds right. a little bit. Get the know? advantage. Yeah. And the night before I talked, I talked with one of my buddies about it. I had the wrong wind to go in, but the thermals, I, I was kind of uphill. And mm-hmm. if I waited till the sun was kind of, you know, coming up, my yeah. thermals should be pushing over them. Well, I'm really nervous as right. I'm pushing in. I can see why. Because, oh yeah. I, I was real nervous. Well, I had, I ended up having a belly crawl about a quarter of a mile because I was scared of getting, I was scared of getting sky lit as I was yeah. going in. And I finally got set up and he's nowhere to be seen. Like I, I looked at my phone, I wasn't getting any tax, nothing. He had disappeared. And I see three does over off to my right. About 15 minutes later, the sun's kind of just starting to creep up a little bit. And are you sitting in this cedar tree at this point? Yeah. Yeah. And I, gotcha. I don't have very much cover. And I knew, I knew on a deer like this, I was going to have some, have to try some unorthodox, unorthodox tactics. Just, yeah. I had to push what I had because this was the end of that cold front too, to try to well, get that's, you, you had to force kind of have to force the situation to get your opportunity because not only are you three hours away from home and your boss is probably like, man, get back. And so you're well, trying to, son, my son's missing me too. It was hard. Yeah, that don't make it easier at all. So no. you're trying to get it done while you have that opportunity of this front. So I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, when I, when I saw those, when I saw those three does off to the right, my heart immediately started pounding because I was, I, I get excited. I, I, yeah. I made up with it, man. I love hunting mm-hmm. just like the rest of us do. Um, but I'm like, man, he's probably going to pop out with them. I was, I was had my hopes up and then about 10 more minutes went by and nothing. I'm like, man, I've just blown the opportunity at the biggest deer I've ever had on camera. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to come together. And then about five minutes after that, I, I hear some rattling, some antlers kind of rattling together. Mm-hmm. And uh, to the left, there was a little, there was a little basket rack buck inside of his rat. They was just barely tickling. You know, they're just playing. It was, yeah, yeah. And that, like, the sun was just about to crest the horizon, and like his, he just looks, <laughs> he looks bigger than the pictures. And I start breathing so hard, the folk the the scope completely fogs up and I'm like, how far oh, is he at this point when you see him he's at 200 yards 200 so 200 in the yards. wheelhouse yeah and and i gotta i gotta throw out to a uh, shout out to my buddy uh larry o'larry with uh l and l outdoors he loaned me he he loaned me his uh muzzle loader mm-hmm. and it's a, a new cva paramount it will shoot it shoots flat i mean he he told me i i could go uh borrow it I, I ordered one from him. It hadn't made it in. So it was a, the reason I'm throwing a shout out to him. He let me borrow his personal muzzle loader and he had it sighted in already, but I shot and it was perfect. So mm-hmm. he had it zeroed at 200 and he was at, the deer was at 186 yards. So oh, perfect. I felt very comfortable, uh, very comfortable at that range, mm-hmm. but, but back to it. Um, I, I, I can get a little sidetracked here. No, but, Hey, that's fine, man. That's just storytelling. You know, I think oh, it's yeah. great. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because I'm gonna do that to you because there might be a detail that I'm like, man, I gotta know that. You know what I mean? That's why I yeah. was like into the story. But you know, I, if you're tucked in a cedar tree and you see him, it's like, man, how far? Because if he's 50 yards, I'd be like losing my mind, you know. But I oh, mean, even yeah. 200 of the deer like this, it's still you're in the wheelhouse. It's you can lose your mind a little. <laughs> oh no, no, I did too. I did, uh, and I was scared of busting those does. They were still to the right mm-hmm. uh, when I looked over and saw him, but. My, my scope finally cleared back up after getting so excited. I actually had to pull my head away and bring it. Like I had to breathe for 45 seconds to let it. I'm like, just he's a deer. He deserves a clean ethical shot. 
of course. You need to calm down, calm your nerves. Well, I got back on him and I, I, I get settled in. I, I had a tripod and everything, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't shoot out that far unless I felt really comfortable. Yeah, of course. So I go to put a little bit of pressure on the trigger and I have it right. Like I had it right on the front of his shoulder because he's quarter two harder than I wanted. Mm-hmm. And I was going to wait for him to turn broadside. Well, I'd only shot that muzzleloader one time before. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I put just a little bit too much pressure and that the box had just pulled apart and I, I put a little bit too much pressure and it surprised me. It went off. And, but I looked up and I seen white belly and, and I was just, I mean, I had tears rolling out of my eyes. I called my boss oh, and I called my boss to thank him. You know, like <laughs> I, it, it was, it, it was kind of a cluster to be honest. Like I, yeah. If you know me, that's things aren't always orthodox. Like, well, that's so. a lot going on. Like your brain's trying to process the situation. So when yeah. it went off, you probably were like, oh crap. Oh and yeah. Then, yeah. So then but I knew, I knew I was solid. So I was actually, I was a little relieved that it went off because I knew I was right on him, but I wasn't yeah. trying to quite shoot yet. I get but you. It, yeah. It was, was kind of like a catch 22, you know, but I yeah. was, Whenever I looked up and seen white belly, I was like, okay. That so was that. it like classic TV muzzle loader? You know, it's like fogs everything out, then it clears off, and then you see the belly, or how was it? You no, know, with this, uh, this was, shoots that buckhorn 209. You yeah. Know, and it didn't fog up. It didn't fog up real bad. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I immediately looked up and seen that little buck running off, and I only saw one deer running away. Before I saw the white belly, I only saw one deer running, and I was like, yeah. Oh, please, 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 please. And I was looking with my eye. And finally, when I saw that white belly, I just, I didn't yell. I didn't anything. I just kind of sat there and took in the moment. I just took in the moment, cried. And then I, I, I you know, when I was calling my buddy, I was like, I, I couldn't hardly talk. <laughs> and he's like, dude, 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 you got it. You've got to just go get up to that deer. And I, I called my boss as well, but yeah. I, and I was trying to get reloaded, getting everything out of there. And I, I made sure I got reloaded. I didn't want to get up there and him. Yeah. Just in case. Away, but it, when I finally made it up to the deer, it felt, it just felt so surreal. It was, I can only imagine, man. So did you, all right. I need to know, because when I shoot a deer, if I could see him laying, I kind of like mosey my way up there and kind of like soak in the anticipation of it. You know what I mean? Like I kind of, yeah, yeah. I kind of milk it. Because, yeah, because you live for that moment, you know, oh, and, and that, that's kind of what those phone calls were about. They were they were I know I was hyperventilating, but it was a whisper, you know, it's 200 yards yeah. away. And that's kind of what those phone calls were about, was trying to share the moment with friends, because, of course, I really I enjoy. That's one thing I, I used to do some filming um, and, and I still do some self filming I mm-hmm. don't miss because I don't want to mess it up. Right, right. But it's just fun sharing the outdoors with with other people and people that you love, you know, so definitely. Well, I mean, I had a couple buddies. I actually was fortunate enough to have two friends that killed big deer. One guy killed a, uh, my buddy Ross killed like a two Oh two inch with his bow. And then oh. my other buddy killed, I think it went like one ninety six or something with a big like um, club off the one side. And oh, that's we, cool. we named him Tommy Tomahawk. And so it's, I'm hunting in Indiana and he calls me, you know, at, and I'm in the stand. I, I tagged out in Illinois. So I'm like low pressure, like just kind of relaxed hunting. And I see his, his name coming across my phone and I'm like, he did it. So I answer and he's like doing the same thing you're saying. It's like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah that's I'm like, exactly. slow down and take in the moment. Like, don't rush over there to him. Like, let your dad meet you at the gate and go get your dad, bring your dad with you. And like, yeah, you know, like, take in the moment for as long as you can. And yeah. just like appreciate it. So that's what I do. That's why I was wondering that, you know, if you, cause a lot of guys excitement, you see guys on some TV shows will run up in there and. Oh no, uh, I, I, uh, you know, when I was younger, I'd made that mistake before actually with turkeys. I had done that with a turkey before and it got away. Yeah. And after that happened, I was like, I'm, I'm just not going to let that happen with another animal. I'm going to get reloaded yeah. and make sure before I walk up there. And uh, see, I'm the opposite with like an archery turkey. If I shoot an archery turkey, I'm out the blind running okay, after. Okay, with the archery turkey, yes. Yeah, yes. gun no, turkey. I, yeah. I, I would be, I'd be running after it, but, but, at, but I would be bringing my bow before <laughs> I had ran up there without any, without my shotgun or anything, and I got yeah. it and took off. So I was unprepared, <laughs> and that wasn't going to happen with this one. No, no way. So, so tell me about getting up to this buck. 
Uh, well, there was no ground shrinkage. I, I honestly was thinking this deer, I thought he was going to score low to mid eighties, yeah. um, which my, my biggest deer in the past was 151. So this was a big, big jump for me. Yeah. Um, if he scored, if he would have scored 165, I would have been thrilled, which I thought he was bigger. But if he was in the 180, I'd be really thrilled. But mm -hmm. when we started adding all the numbers together, um, the neighbor actually had some pictures of this deer and he knows my cousin. He wanted to come over and see. Mm -hmm. He was there to keep us honest. Well, well, it was my best friend who was scoring, scoring the deer, but he, he ended up going 195 and seven eighths. <sighs> and when I heard that, my jaw just really dropped. I'm like, man, I, I, I was going to be happy if I ever killed, you know, a couple 170 inch deer, but to, yeah. to go up into one nineties was the super giant man. Yeah. It, it, I just felt really blessed. Yeah. I can only imagine that's an absolute stud, man. And special animal. you have the rack with you. I do. I do. I, I took him to the processor and then took him to get mounted and he, he cut it off and I'm going to bring it back to him when we're done. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those, Hey, can I take the rack with me? I don't trust yeah, anybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't want anybody stealing that from the shop right there, but it's, wow. I don't know if I can get them all. I may have to scoot back some. Yeah. I mean, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, Man, he is no. cool. He just had a lot of character. He had 16 scoreable. Like you can see right here, uh, his G2 was split here. You know, he's, he's going yeah. to, he's going to gross. He, or he grossed one. Night. I, I don't know what he netted yet. I, it don't matter, man. That's what he yeah, is. He That's what I would say. Scoreable. Uh, here's one of the kickers he had on the side. And this is one thing I loved about him. He carried his here on his G2 or on his uh two three four five between his five and main beam there yeah that is actually would have been one or like so, look how much mass he carries yeah right there he just the thing that surprised me most is why he went so big was the the mass on this deer that just, dude and he's just got a big wide frame he's just really impressive looking the way he carries everything through that's i and i i didn't really want to share this on the podcast because I didn't really want anybody else knowing, but don't say I anything actually, that you don't want out there. Oh no, it's <laughs> it's it, no, it's okay. There was a uh, there was another really big deer, uh, probably in the mid seventies, mm -hmm. um, and I actually that opening week I I'd, I'd seen some does, but I saw him right at last shooting light one last night that last night and I was, I had really thought about shooting him, but I'd made, I'd made up my mind that I was just going to hunt him. But man, going from 150 to whatever. And then, yeah. um, but it, it all ended up paying off and it was. It's an absolute giant, man. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I actually, I think within a day of you shooting that, I got text messages, uh, from Mark about it. He goes, oh, like, cool. Check cool. this out. I'm like, Oh man, that is a stud. Well, so, like I, I, I used to, I used to film mm -hmm. for Terry and yeah. uh, I immediately, I got a hold of Mark and Terry. I, I, uh, asked Mark about, you know, uh, John Dittmer, you know, taxidermy and, mm -hmm. um, and he said, well, send me pictures, see what you got. And he, he had nothing but nice things to say. And I, I really appreciate it, Mark. And I appreciate it, Terry. I enjoyed our conversations and mm -hmm. I really appreciate my, enjoyed my time with you guys too. I learned a, a more than I could even like, yeah, I can only I imagine so man much, uh, being around those guys. So. Well, dude, I'm, I'm happy for you on that deer. That is awesome. And to get it. So October 1st is when our season opens here. So at the time of this recording, it's season here in Illinois and Iowa today, um, just open, but it's hotter than heck. Um, but I'm, I'm going to probably get out and try and wax a doe or something in one of my like low pressure areas or something like that. But cool, um, man. Like doing this, I'm hoping this is rubbing some good juju off. I know, I, I know, I hope so too. <laughs> uh, our opener was actually today in Oklahoma as well, so good luck to everybody out there. Um, it's tomorrow, cool, man. You got pressure off birthday. you. Tomorrow's my birthday. I've always wanted to kill a birthday buck, but I told yeah. my wife after I killed this one, I'm not going to do much more hunting the rest of the year. But I was talking to her last yeah. night about maybe going tomorrow. Said my birthday. I said, well, you. You already killed a buck. Why do you need to go again? I said, well, I've always wanted to kill a birthday buck. So. My birthday. Well, happy birthday, man. Hopefully you can Thanks, pull man. that off. Um, I mean, you got to feel good about, you know, getting a super giant like that buck of a lifetime. And then now like pressure's off, like uh, days that it's not perfect, like weather condition wise, like you can hang out with your boy and not feel yes. 
like that hunting guilt, like I should be out there, you know, or whatever. I, I have that eats at me if I have a tag and I'm like, I should be going, but it's hard to leave the family sometimes. And so it's going to be a lot easier to sit at home uh, and hang out with my son and yeah. just relax some on the weekends now. For yeah. Sure. I love it, man. It, that thing's an absolute giant. So like, were you just having a bunch of people hit you up about it or is there anything else? Like, you know, you said the neighbor had trail cam pictures. Did you I learn had, any more about the deer besides the neighbor? I did. I had one more thing. Um, and I can show you here mm -hmm. my, uh, I, I made friends with a guy that processed the deer. He, mm -hmm. he'd let me take him, freeze him, you know, get and then so I could take him back out that evening and take some nice evening pictures. Yeah. But, uh, he texted me last night and he said, you want to, you want to add something cool, uh, something cool to the story on your deer. He found a broadhead in the shoulder of my deer. So he had been shot last year. Uh, here you can see it buried in the fatty tissue. I don't know how we can see it, but, um, it's kind of, Oh yeah. Maybe that maybe you can send those to me and I'll overlay them. We'll see how yeah, graphic yeah, it is. Yeah, but he found he found a broadhead in the deer, and so I, I apparently it had to be from last year because there was no fresh cuts or anything. Yeah. So apparently he was pretty big last year too, or somebody. But the neighbor never said anything like, "Oh, I hit this buck last year" or anything like that. No, but there was hunting pre there was hunting pressure from northeast, south, west. I mean, there was pressure from every corner. So I don't. It was probably a different neighbor who shot him. I'm wondering if that once this podcast comes out, if uh, you'll get somebody back. Hey, man, that I hit that buck, or I didn't realize it, but that's the buck I shot. You know what I mean? Something like that. You know, and if so, uh, that'd be that'd be really cool. So he could know the, you know, and and maybe you could get some trail cam photos from the year prior. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, no, because this is my first year on that farm, so. Well, it worked yeah, out. That was really cool to have. Yes, yes. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me in the middle of the day like this. And uh, man, just it was it was awesome talking to you. And uh, kill a birthday buck, man. And then we'll do another <laughs> giant tracker segment with your next one. <laughs> uh, yeah. If if I shoot a you know a 120 inch eight point, uh, you know old deer, I'll, I'll be happy. So yeah, I'm not I'm not expecting another one like this for for quite a while. But hey, man, I mean. It really is a buck of a lifetime, but I've seen crazier stuff. You know, there's, you know, one, one of my buddies, Ross, he shot a 200 and he's like, Oh, that'd be the biggest year ever shoot. Then he shoots another one five years later. That'd be the biggest year ever shoot. Then last season shot a CS three. <laughs> well, hopefully, I, hopefully we can keep the ball rolling. It wouldn't hurt my feelings any. I, I would be, I'd feel blessed, but I, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at right now. So when I grew, I grew up hunting in Fulton County, Illinois. And, and one of the guys I grew up hunting with, my dad killed 191 inch, like mainframe eight, just a giant. And I always remember him saying deer like that just don't come around. And I was like, man, that is so true. It's just not common for a lot of people to have deer like that come around. So, um, you'll go down as a legend in your family. I'm sure because of that deer, which is cool. Well, thanks, man. I, I've, I, I and I knew getting those pictures that I mean, I've ran cameras on some pretty nice places for mm -hmm. a long time now and never had anything like that. And I knew I had to, I knew I had to put the time in and yeah thing in my power to to try to get it done and luck i there was a lot of luck came together yeah so well it's cool because you know this is the third giant tracker segment we've done and so far everybody we've talked to is uh very aware of the quality of the animal they shot and very respectful and appreciative of it and that i love seeing that i think that's how everybody should be because yeah. you always kind of I've, I'm, I'm a measure and i've talked to a lot of guys who've shot super giants and a couple of them were kind of like, yeah, you know what I mean? Just not really into what yeah. it was. And I'm like, man, I don't I, get that. No, the truth, the truth be told is I didn't, I didn't care if I measured like my buddies was really wanting to get the tape to him and everything, but yeah. I was so happy. And like, you know, if he was going to go one six, he's gonna be happy. If he's gonna be 200, I was going to be happy. But right. when he did put the tape to it and he was that, I was just, my, my mind was blown like, just a bonus yeah yeah but it's it's all about the animals and the uh, it's in the the time you get to spend with your friends in the outdoors like we talked about it's yeah those memories are all we're gonna have to take with us so. exactly exactly man well i appreciate you doing this and i appreciate everybody tuning in to the third installment of the giant tracker segment uh you got anything you want to close out with or anything uh, just good luck to everyone to, you know, today is opening day, uh, in a lot of States. So everybody yep. stay safe and I hope you guys have a great year for sure. 
All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. You know what to do. Go shoot a giant. Appreciate you guys. Good luck out there.